हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक एंड यू आर वाचिंग योर मेडिसिन चैनल एमएमएस एम मैक्स मेडिसिन सिंपल सो इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर फ्रॉम रोमेटोलॉजी सीरीज वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द क्लिनिकल एंड आर्टिकुलर सिम्टम्स ऑफ रोमेटेड आर्थराइटिस सो नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल टॉक ऑन द एक्स्ट्रा आर्टिकुलर मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ रोमेटेड आर्थराइटिस राइट सो एज वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट वी हैव एन रोमेटेड फैक्टर विच इज एन आई अगेंस्ट द एफ पोर्सन ऑफ आई also patient will come with the elevated levels of esr and crp the inflammatory markers along with the hepcidin the acute phase reactant since we know that rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune chronic symmetric systemic inflammatory arthritis systemic means that can affect any part of your body right so your patient might have both articular and extra articular manifestations right so in our previous lecture we have already discussed about the articular manifestations so now today we will talk about the extra articular features in this lecture so your patient might have pulmonary fibrosis pleuritis hematologic abnormalities like anemia pericarditis vasculitis subcutaneous nodules also becker's cyst and your patient might have ophthalmologic manifestations and cns manifestations like depression so before we talk about the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis let's recap something important as we are discussing this definition in every lecture because this is really very important and complete definition of rheumatoid arthritis as we know that rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune chronic means more than 6 weeks systemic inflammatory disease which affects your small joints but symmetrically and it's common in females the female to male ratio is 3 to 1 right also patient with rheumatoid arthritis might have both articular and extra articular features because this is the systemic type of arthritis since we know that rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory type of arthritis means your patient will come to with the cardinal signs of inflammation such as redness swelling pain hotness disability loss of function which is worse in the morning and improve as the day passes with activity right also patient will have elevated levels of esr and crp the inflammatory markers whereas in osteoarthritis since this is an asymmetric and non inflammatory arthritis means your patient will not come to with the cardinal signs of inflammation and elevated levels of esr and crp though the stiffness and pain is worse in evening unlike rheumatoid arthritis where it's worse in morning Now let's talk about the extra articular manifestations so that may develop even prior to the onset of arthritis. So what are those risk factors which put the patient on risk to develop extra articular manifestations? So those are history of smoking, patient is positive for rheumatoid factor and early onset of disability. So the most common features are subcutaneous nodules, secondary Asgeran syndrome, pulmonary nodules and anemia. secondary asgeran syndrome means when patient is having the signs and symptoms of primary asgeran syndrome along with other rheumatic disease like sle ra rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma so here in this picture we can see all the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis so your patient might have ophthalmologic manifestations like scleritis and episcleritis also dry eyes and dry mouth that is asgeran syndrome pericarditis splenomegaly that is felty syndrome also nodules brucitis tenosynovitis and hematologic abnormalities like anemia the cns manifestations like encephalopathy and depression lymphadenopathy also the lung manifestations like pleural effusion kaplan syndrome small airway disease also renal manifestations like amyloidosis also the sensory motor polyneuropathy now let's talk about the constitutional symptoms in rheumatoid arthritis patient constitutional means this is a group of symptoms that may affect many systems right so that involve weight loss fever fatigue malaise depression and cachexia that is severe weakness and wasting of the body due to the severe chronic illness so these constitutional symptoms they reflect the high degree of inflammation and after that they proceed to the onset of joint symptoms also presence of fever of more than 38.3 degrees celsius during the clinical course should raise the suspicion of systemic vasculitis so we must check for systemic vasculitis 
if your rheumatoid arthritis patient is having a fever of more than 38.3 degree celsius subcutaneous nodules so almost 30 to 40 percent of rheumatoid patient manifest with subcutaneous nodules and these nodules are common in those patient they are with the highest level of disease activity also positive for serum rheumatoid factor and having the radiographic evidence of joint erosions on palpation these nodules are firm non-tender and adherent to the periosteum tendons and bursae also they cause the repeated trauma and irritation of forearm sacral prominences and achilles tendon apart from the bone prominences they may occur in lungs pleura pericardium and peritoneum typically they are benign but these nodules are associated with the infection ulceration and gangrene secondary azeogren syndrome so when we call it secondary azeogren syndrome as we already discussed if patient is having the presence of either keratoconjunctivitis sicca that is dry eyes and xerostomia that is dry mouth in association with the another connective tissue disease such as rheumatoid arthritis so approximately 10% of rheumatoid arthritis patient have secondary azeogren syndrome vasculitis so especially in the patients with long standing disease positive test for rheumatoid factor and hypocomplementinemia those patients are at risk to develop vasculitis so the cutaneous signs of vasculitis are patchy purpura digital infarcts gangrene levido reticularis and in severe cases large painful lower extremity ulceration so the vasculitic ulcers are difficult to distinguish from the venous insufficiency ulcers and they are generally treated with the immunosuppressive agents and skin grafting lastly sensory motor polyneuropathies especially mononeuritis multiplex so what is mononeuritis multiplex so this is a painful asymmetrical asynchronous sensory and motor peripheral neuropathy right which is involving isolated damage to at least two separate nerve areas so also multiple nerves in random areas of the body can be affected by mononeuritis multiplex so this is in the association with the systemic rheumatoid vasculitis now let's talk about the pulmonary manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis so please take a note that pleuritis is the most common pulmonary manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis that may produce pleuritic chest pain dyspnea pleural friction rub and effusion so in pleuritis in patient with rheumatoid arthritis the pleural effusion is tend to be exudative with increased number of monocytes and neutrophils also interstitial lung disease ild may occur with rheumatoid arthritis and which is heralded by the symptoms of dry cough and progressive shortness of breath interstitial lung disease can be associated with cigarette smoking and which is commonly found in those patients they are having the higher disease activity so the diagnosis of ild in rheumatoid patient is made by the high resolution chest computed tomography hrct along with the pulmonary function testing that shows a restrictive pattern that means your patient will have reduced total lung capacity along with the reduced diffusion capacity for carbon monoxide also the presence of ild in rheumatoid arthritis patient confers a poor prognosis kaplan syndrome so what is kaplan syndrome so this is also known as rheumatoid pneumoconiosis so this is when swelling like inflammation and scarring of the lungs and it occurs in people with rheumatoid arthritis who have breathed dust and coal particles like someone who is working in coal mines right so this is rare subset of pulmonary nodulosis which is characterized by the development of nodules and pneumoconiosis following the silica exposure cardiac manifestations please take a note that in rheumatoid arthritis patient the most frequent site of cardiac involvement is pericardium pericarditis which occurs in less than 10% of patient also the another clinically important manifestation of ra is cardiomyopathy and that may result from the necrotizing or granulomatous myocarditis 
coronary artery disease and diastolic dysfunction. Please also take a note that the mitral regurgitation is the most common valvular abnormality in RA. Also, cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and that is attributed to the coronary artery disease and the carotid atherosclerosis. Hematologic abnormalities. So please take a note that the most common hematologic abnormality in rheumatoid patient is anemia and that is normochromic normocytic type. So the degree of anemia parallels the degree of inflammation and that is correlating with the levels of serum C-reactive protein and ESR erythrocyte sedimentase rate. Also there will be elevation in platelet counts in rheumatoid arthritis patient because platelets are acute phase reactant therefore there will be increase in platelets in response to various stimuli including the systemic infections, inflammatory conditions, bleeding and tumors. Also there will be thrombocytopenia but that will be rare in some cases. Felty syndrome which occurs in less than 1% of patients and defined by the clinical triad of neutropenia, splenomegaly and nodular rheumatoid arthritis. Also T cell large granular lymphocyte leukemia, TLGL and leukopenia may occur in rheumatoid arthritis patient. So lastly we will talk about the lymphomas. So patients with rheumatoid arthritis are at risk to develop diffuse large B cell lymphoma which is associated with the Felty syndrome activity. If one patient is having high Felty syndrome activity, then that patient is at higher risk to develop diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Also osteoporosis, which is common in rheumatoid arthritis patient and the prevalence rate is 20 to 30% which is attributed to the inflammatory milieu that is release of diverse cytokines and chemokines, chronic use of glucocorticoids and disability related immobility. Also the hip fractures are likely to occur in rheumatoid arthritis patient. Hypoandrogenism In men and postmenopausal women, because of the chronic inflammatory responses, there is decrease in mean serum testosterone, luteinizing hormone LH and DHEA levels. Also the chronic glucocorticoid therapy develop hypoandrogenism that is owing to the inhibition of LH, luteinizing hormone and FSS secretion from the pituitary gland. So please take a note that low testosterone leads to osteoporosis. So men with hypoandrogenism should be considered for androgen replacement therapy. So thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe the channel to get all latest videos like this and also help my this beautiful imaginary patient Simran to reach and teach more and more patients like her about this nasty disease rheumatoid arthritis. Stay safe, stay happy, study a lot. Thank you so much guys.